Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. We do know that the people of Morwell, especially those living and working in the southern part of Morwell, have been through a very tough time in the past five weeks or so. The health of the people of Morwell, that's all of Morwell, just not, not just the southern part, has been our first priority over this time, and we've tried to take an appropriate precautionary approach to the advice that we've given. As you know, the Fire Services Commissioner advised a week ago that the status of the fire was, was now controlled and that status has continued to be, to be the same and obviously further progress has been made on, on the fire. The crucial factor is that air quality, particularly the, the fine particulate matter in the smoke, has improved significantly over the past few days. There were some ups and downs over the, over the past week which meant we um, delayed making this announcement until today but, as I said, air quality over the past few days has been, has been very good. And because of this, I can announce today that the advice I gave on the 28th of February, that people in the particularly vulnerable groups should temporarily relocate out of the southern areas of Morwell, I can lift that advice and advise that those groups can now plan to return to living and working in the southern area of Morwell. So those groups were people over 65, children under school age, pregnant women and those with pre-existing heart or lung conditions, as I said, can now plan to return to their home or place of work in the southern area of Morwell. For those who've been away from their homes, obviously there will be some build-up of, of ash in their homes and information about the clean-up of homes and business premises is available on the Department of Health website. We will continue to liaise very closely with the Environment Protection Authority, which we have been doing throughout this process, to continue to monitor air quality data. As work continues on the fire in the coal mine, there may well be um, further brief periods of smoke, but we certainly don't expect these to be anywhere near um, the sorts of levels that have been experienced earlier in the event. However, there may be brief periods, and we will issue health advice um, if that's needed. And of course, we'll continue to liaise with the Fire Services Commissioner about any change in the fire status which might contribute to any deterioration in air quality. So I hope this is good news for the people of um, Morwell, and particularly Southern Morwell, that um, but they can now plan to return to their place of residence or work. Just to note that the Community Health Assessment Centre will remain open until the end of March at least, after which um, its future will be decided at the end of March. And just over 2,000 people have now visited that centre. And so we're pleased to advise that uh, basic health assessments and advice have been given and no serious problems have been seen as a result of this event. So I now hold, hand back to Craig. Thanks, Rosemary. And now that's obviously great news for uh, Moore. Um, from that, uh, we've got to say welcome back, I suppose, to, uh, to those that are um, or have been relocated. But it is important to also note that uh, a number of businesses in, in uh, Morwell have uh, suffered slow business. And I suppose the message goes back, it's a place to come back, visit, buy, shop, have a cup of coffee and enjoy what Morwell offers. Um, with the fire, it's obviously still con uh, controlled and will remain that way. Over the weekend, we expected a little bit more rain than we got. So the rain we've got has been helpful, but hasn't, uh, hasn't done what we would have liked it to do which means that we've uh, rostered uh, firefighters from Victoria and into state for 24 hour shifts through to Friday of this week to continue to work around the clock to put out those hotspots. And although there's only a small number of hotspots, they are quite complex in, uh, in the works that's required, including excavation works, use of helicopters, um, fire trucks and fire crews working with the mine staff to, uh, to continue to put out what are the hotspots. From there, Obviously the hot areas are from time to time putting up smoke, uh, that will be visible um, although we believe it will be minimal and also from time to time there will be some level of ash or dust um, in the air which will be critical for um, EPA and the Chief Health Officer to be aware of. But certainly won't return to where we've been over the last number of weeks. It's, uh, it's minimal in the amount um, but still will be visible to some. So I suppose the best thing is to say uh, come home. Um, and uh, certainly build your clean-up plan, assess your property and, uh, and government and the, and the city will provide extra information later this week about clean-up options and support. Um, John. 
Thanks, uh, thanks, Craig. Good afternoon, everybody. It is obviously excellent news that um, uh, that the uh, advice has been has been lifted. But I do want to assure the community that the EPA's work continues. As Craig has said, we'll continue to see firefighting activity on some of the hotspots, and it may be that that, that they produce p patches of smoke. And as residents of Morwell and indeed the Valley know that if the wind conditions are not right or we get one of those inversions in the morning, we may well have some experience of smoke. So I can assure the community that the EPA will continue to monitor uh, the smoke in the valley. We will be continuing to issue alerts if we see a match-up between firefighting activity and wind directions or we can see an inversion coming. Um, in fact, we'll be monitoring um, air in the valley using the main stations now uh, at least for the next 12 months. At the end of that period, we'll sit down with the council and review the air quality. We'll also be putting in additional air quality monitoring for the fine particles in Maui and into Churchill. Our aim here is to keep monitoring air in the valley until we've restored the residents' confidence in the air that they're breathing. We've been monitoring air for decades down here and had seen dramatic improvements. This is a setback, but we are determined to be here and monitor that. We'll keep monitoring the ash, we'll keep monitoring the smoke, and we'll be working through the council to make sure those results are available to everybody in the valley until such time as people are confident in the air that they're breathing. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Council is delighted with the announcement today that it is clear for people to come back home. Council, together with 33 municipalities and agencies, have completed door knocking of all the homes in Moore. Nearly half of the residents were home and have been spoken to with a survey completed informing us of their concerns. The residents not home have had calling cards left for follow-up. The major concerns have been the amenity to homes and businesses. Council remains committed to standing with our community during this whole process. Thank you. Okay. Just in summary, there's uh, probably a couple of things before we go to questions. Schools uh, obviously have been notified today um, from the Chief Health Officer that is uh, those schools that have relocated can now start the plan um, for them to come back. And obviously each principal will be responsible with the Department of Education to develop a plan that considers the clean up of the school and what is in the best interest of those school students. So uh, that will be obviously something that principals will communicate to the school community, to the parents of those, uh, those students, and obviously uh, stay tuned to what uh, each school will need to do to allow them to come back to more. Uh, it is great news, so uh, we'll go to questions. Uh, the relocation grants, um, or the, the respite of relocation grants, will be uh, not available as a result of this, of this uh, announcement. Um, those people that have actually booked uh, an assessment will be dealt with, and DHS will deal with each individual. And uh, if there's cases of special circumstances, obviously DHS will uh, work through that in an individual case. But the grants, as a result of this uh, announcement, will cease. Um, they are both for relocation and respite grants. So um, we've um, had 9,000 calls um, to the uh, DHS hotline over the period of time that we've operated that hotline. We've um, uh, made nearly 4,000 respite assistance payments in that time and have made over 1,000 1, relocation payments, noting that those are weekly payments um, for the duration of the event that we've had. So that's, that's the extent of the um, payments that we've been able to assist people. And we know from the conversations that we've had with people, um, a large proportion of those people are coming back and have already relocated. Um, and we know that they're keen to um, return back to their homes and get back to normal activities. Um, and we'll be talking to those that we believe are still uh, relocated to assist them with any other uh, return, return to home. How much money has been spent on the payments? Um, look, I haven't got the um, last uh, bit of information, but it's um, close to um, $3 million. And that's um, assistance directly to people um, to provide them with both respite and relocation. I think it's extremely unlikely. Uh, if you look at the pattern of air quality that we've seen over the past 
a couple of weeks even, um, the air quality is dramatically, dramatically better than it was in the early weeks of this, of this event. So in barring any major disaster with the fire, um, I think it's extremely unlikely that we would issue another temporary relocation advice. There's still a lot of uncertainty in the community about um, long-term health effects. Can you say anything to reassure residents? Well, what we've said from the start is that we know that exposure to fine particles such as this produces immediate health effects, particularly for those um, with existing heart or lung conditions. Fortunately, we haven't seen um, particular evidence of that, which is great news. We wouldn't expect to see, with a relatively short-term exposure of this, of this type, we wouldn't expect to see long-term health effects. We are continuing some discussions internally about um, whether we commission any sort of health study. And we'll obviously continue those discussions and consult the, consult the council, consult the community before any decisions are made. Does the health department regret waiting until the 28th of February to issue this relocation advice? No, from the health department we issued from the beginning, in conjunction with the EPA, we issued um, health alerts about the health effects of smoke on your health and the sorts of things that people need to do to protect their health. So those, um, those advice uh, messages were issued from the beginning. Effects on health depend on the, the, height, of the, the height of the hazard, so the height of the, um, of the levels of the fine particles across the time of exposure. So uh, a high, um, high levels of fine particles for one day is one thing. High levels of fine particles over a succession of days and going into a couple of weeks is another. Once we were at about two weeks, and I had advice from the Fire Services Commissioner that the, the fire was not about to be put out any time soon, I decided that as a precaution that we should move those vulnerable people away from continuing exposure to the fine particles. So it wasn't that the mower was safe one day and unsafe the next. It was a matter of removing people from continuing exposure, knowing that continuing exposure would increase their risk of uh, aggravating their existing conditions. The ash itself is not toxic, so that's quite similar to ash you'd find in your fireplace after you've um, had an open fire. With, it can, although, irritate skin, eyes, mouth. So if, in terms of comfort, it's best to keep away from ash as much as possible. When you're cleaning up the ash, it also can stir up those fine particles, which are what are a problem for people with heart and lung conditions. So we are recommending that if you are cleaning up, that it's probably better to wear a mask but remember that for a mask to be effective, it has to um, be fitted properly with a good seal. So there is advice on our website, uh, both about general cleanup and about how to wear a mask in particular. I'm not sure the answer is, but is it known roughly how many people did end up temporarily relocated? I'll hand that to you So we know that we assisted in that first um, period of time, approximately 670 people with a temporary relocation assistance. Um, but we also know that through the course of the last two weeks, that's reduced to about 375 people that received the second round of um, temporary relocation assistance. And people have told us that um, they've, they've wanted to get back home and um, have returned, in fact, home. Look, there might have been some new um, applications, but on the whole, that's the same group of people and a reducing level of it. Right. We might uh, wind it up there. Just to, again, in closing, um, great day for Morwell, uh, but it's not over. We've still, got, we've still got to work with the Morwell community about clean-up. The city will lead that um, in, and be supported by the government. Uh, I think that's critical that uh, we haven't got fire trucks leaving today. There's still more work to be done in the mine, but we've got a controlled situation getting better by the day uh, not seeing large amounts of smoke to impact on anyone's health uh, and we'll, uh, we'll ensure that that is a controlled environment. We won't return to a major fire that we've seen weeks ago. Uh, we're not in that space. We're into the final stages of what has been a complex fire. Um, but the support that goes to Morwell continues and it will change in, in some levels of support through the city and particularly through DHS. But the important thing I think is that uh, Morwell community will still receive support ongoing and that's critical. Thank you.